The southern islands of the Outer Hebrides may look deserted, but they're home to the richest concentration of wildlife in Britain. They also appear completely natural, yet much of the landscape on the north and south Uists and neighbouring Barra is man-made. People have been carving out a living here for about 8,000 years. It began with the prehistoric settlers who erected the mysterious standing stones known as Finn's People on North Uist. Then came the Iron Age communities who built man-made islands on the lochs to defend their homes against invasion. Much later, the crofters arrived, subsistence farmers who still live in thatched cottages known as black houses. These people have also traditionally made a living from the sea. But as Atlantic fish stocks dwindle, former fishermen like James McCletchie have been forced to find new ways to make a living. When James isn't singing in a local Gaelic band, he's working as a nature guide. He teaches visitors to use their eyes, like Hebrideans, to spot wildlife that's everywhere, but only if you know where to look. If you come to the Hebrides, you'll experience a unique culture, indigenous people that speak Gaelic language but also an incredible variety of wildlife and nature and a huge range of biodiversity and habitats. Visitors have become an important part of the Hebridean economy, helping local people to maintain a sustainable lifestyle. With the money that comes from tourism, deserted manors have been reborn as nesting sites on bird sanctuaries. And once derelict crofters' cottages are being restored as youth hostels and B&Bs. Some things don't change. Farmers in the Southern Hebrides still work the machar, the Gaelic word for the vast, low-lying plain behind the beaches of the west coast. You would hardly believe you could actually grow anything in this at all. Machar has a very simple definition. It's wind-blown sand that comes in from the sea and mixes up with dark soil and forms Machar, just very sandy. It wouldn't be here at all if crofters hadn't worked this landscape for more than 200 years. They've added manure to it, they've looked after it, they've harvested it, they leave the ground fallow for three years and then the flowers come back. And we have more than 155 species of wildflower here in the summer. It's absolutely incredible. This is one of the few places in the world where the wildflowers on the shore have adapted to be able to survive, even when flooded by seawater at high tide. Then there are the birds, lots of them. There are the native mammals, such as the fiercely protected otter. You can sometimes spot them at twilight, fishing in lochs beside the road. Seals are also not difficult to spot, swimming around the rocks at Burnery, a tiny isle off the coast of the Uists. This is not the place to come if you want wall-to-wall -wall bars and restaurants, but then who needs a restaurant when food is free for the taking? Whether you're an oyster catcher foraging for seafood or a crofter gathering cockles for his supper. So here we are looking for cockles on the beach. And one of the things we do is we, in the summertime, the cockles come much higher up from on the bottom of the sand. And we just put a finger down underneath this little green bit. We wiggle about a bit, you feel around, and then we get some cockles. And what we're looking for here is these types of green marks. Sometimes you maybe get two or three in the same area. Got two there, not two, not a bad size. There's also usually some small ones. You wash them, normally wash them in the sand, 
and when you take them back home you can make sure the sun gets out to them and we eat them. Fantastic food. Yes, 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 yes,